In this video, we will provide an overview of amblyopia for patients and family. We will go over the different types of amblyopia, its causes, and treatments. Amblyopia, commonly known as lazy eye, is the most common cause for decreased vision in children. It affects about 2-4% to of all children, with increasing risks associated with family history, prematurity, and developmental delay. It occurs when a defect in the eye affects its sharp central vision, leading to abnormal visual development in the critical period early in life. Children are susceptible to this, at least until age 7 or 8. When an eye is not able to see well due to a defect, the eye is not used or ignored by the brain. With constant non-use over time, this results in a poorly formed brain-eye connection. When all of this occurs during the critical period for brain and vision development in a child, this can lead to long-term permanent changes in the brain. The visual cortex, which is the part of the brain responsible for vision, becomes underdeveloped. The severity of amblyopia is defined by the best visual acuity that can be achieved in either eye. Mild amblyopia is a visual acuity greater than 2040, moderate is in between 2040 to 2080, and severe is less than 2100. As mentioned previously, essentially anything that blocks the line of sight and affects central vision can cause amblyopia. Some common causes include refractive error, ptosis, cataracts, strabismus, periocular or retinal lesions. We will go over each of the different types now. Refractive amblyopia occurs when there is significant refractive error in one or both eyes, resulting in an unfocused and unclear image on the retina. There are two main types of refractive amblyopia. Anisometropic amblyopia is more common and occurs when the two eyes have significantly different refractive errors, such that the image in one eye is not focused on the retina at the same time as the other eye. The less clear image is ignored by the brain and that eye becomes amblyopic. Isometropic amblyopia is less common and occurs when both eyes have similar but severe uncorrected refractive error. In this case, both eyes are affected as neither develops proper connection with the brain. For more information on refractive errors, please check out our video on refractive errors. Strabismus is the misalignment of the eyes. Strabismic amblyopia occurs when the misaligned eyes present two different images to the brain. To avoid seeing double, the brain shuts off the image from the eye that is not straight. This turning off of the eye is called suppression. Over time, repeated suppression of one eye results in strabismic amblyopia. In this example, notice the light reflection in the eye is not symmetric. The red arrow shows how much the light reflection is off from the center of the pupil in the left eye. Deprivation amblyopia is the least common and most severe type of amblyopia. It results from vision deprivation, typically from a lesion that is obstructing the pupil or the line of sight. This is usually due to an eye condition that is congenital or develops early on in life. Urgent correction of the underlying cause of visual deprivation is required to prevent severe amblyopia and permanent visual impairment. This is an example of a congenital cataract blocking the line of sight. This will result in severe deprivation amblyopia if not promptly removed with surgery. Another cause of deprivation amblyopia is ptosis, or a droopy eyelid. This is especially problematic if the child does not try to use the eye by holding the chin up. Parents should allow their child to keep the chin up if this is present, although definitive treatment is usually surgery to correct the ptosis. Legions on the surface of the eye or around the eye can also lead to deprivation amblyopia, especially if they encroach or block the line of sight. This is an example of a dermoid on the eye, commonly seen with dermal tissue, such as hair follicles. Legions on the retina itself can also lead to deprivation of vision. This can include hemorrhages, residual fetal vascular tissue, or tumors. This is an example of a retinoblastoma, a tumor of the retina. Treatment of amblyopia is a stepwise approach. First, any visual obstruction causing deprivation should be addressed. Next, we make sure significant refractive errors are corrected. After things preventing the amblyopic eye from seeing well are addressed, 
The next step is employing methods to encourage the use of the amblyopic eye. One way to encourage use of the amblyopic eye is patching the good eye. The amount of patching depends on the severity of amblyopia. When patching, notice that any glasses should be worn over the patch. Atropine can also be used as an alternative to patching by blurring the good eye. It is used when the good eye is farsighted as atropine can prevent the eye from focusing on near objects, making the good eye blurry. Sometimes, surgery is needed to correct the underlying cause, such as misalignment, cataracts, or ptosis. It is also important to monitor for reverse amblyopia, which is when the patched good eye becomes weak from too much patching. This concludes our video on the basics of amblyopia. For additional information on amblyopia or other common eye problems, please check out our website and YouTube channel.